Welcome to Driving the Line, the pursuit of safety, where we talk about the real issues out on the road, focus on safe driving, and learn industry best practices from your hosts, Kenny Ray, Mike Bohan, and Jim Seibert, in the hopes that by driving the line, we get more drivers home safe and sound. This podcast was made possible by Marsh McLennan Agency. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Driving the Line, the Pursuit of Safety podcast, where we are always in the pursuit of safety. We've got something special for you today. We're in a room full of people, a little bit of a distraction. Mike, what is going on? Well, I tell you, we're trying something new. This is almost kind of like a Driving the Line extra, so to speak. We've never we've never done this before. We've never recorded a podcast in front of a group. We don't have guests on very often. We have done that a couple of times. But where we're at is Osage Beach, Missouri, at the Missouri Trucking Association's Safety Conference. We do this every year. It's a great group of of professionals. And what we wanted to do this year was, after the sessions were over, we wanted to grab a couple of guys and just talk with them about safety. Because these two guys that are sitting right next to me are are two of the best safety guys in the business. And... uh, We'll, I'll introduce them here in a second, but both of these guys have served the Missouri Trucking Association as chair of the Council of Safety Supervisors. So that's that's who sponsors this event. That's who's putting it on. One of the individuals is the current chair, and one of them was the previous chair. So to my direct left, we've got Brad Red, who's the current chair. Brad's with Buckeye Logistics here in Missouri. And uh, you're the safety director and human resources director down there. And training and HR and yeah. We're a lot of different hats. Yes. Yeah. And directly to his left, we've got Andy Standifer with Flinter Brothers down in uh, Southwest Missouri. And uh, safety director uh, slash HR slash driver slash you wear some different hats too, don't you? Just like uh, every other small business, you, you got more than one job, right? Yeah. We, we do what we got to do to get the job done. And then as always... Kenny's here, Mike here, Jim here. Um, and again, we just wanted to kind of have a conversation. Here. We're, we're gathering here this week to talk about safety with all of our group, but we want to pick your brains and ask you what safety means to you and why you do what you do. Because I've asked Jim and I've asked Kenny this question. Did you have a moment where you realized what you do makes a difference and it means something to you? It just You kind of had that moment or maybe it was a gradual thing. But Brad, do you, in your career, because you've you've been at several different companies and, and uh, where you're at now, you've got a great culture, you've got great folks there, but is there a moment in your career when you can look back and say, I, I knew I was doing something that made a difference and I knew this was something that I'm going to, I'm going to give my career to. It was really more of a gradual transition from the truck into the office. Um, part of that was pushed by my wife and a uh, personal need. But I had been groomed and helped along throughout my career by some very good mentors. And the first opportunity that came along to transition to the safety and training side of things, I jumped all over it. And how long have you been in safety? Uh, I got out of the truck in 2009, uh, come back from Afghanistan in 2010. It's when I transitioned into training okay. and safety. I did fail to mention that you are a veteran. We appreciate your service yeah. to the country. So. Thank you. Yeah. Andy, how about you? So I got into the trucking industry when I was 26 years old. That was just a couple of years ago, by the way. Uh, Let's add that up, right? (laughs) Trucking changed my life. As as a young man, I had had attempted a a few different paths. And I finally, you know, just succumbed to what I wanted to do since I was a little boy. And it turned out I was pretty decent at it. I started, uh, you know, training student drivers as a driver finisher and, I, I found out about this passion that I had for the industry, trucking, and education. And um, that's where it all just kind of took off from there. We we had a great session today where we heard from Kenneth Tolliver. And what one thing he continually said, talked about was passion, passion, passion. And that's where it all just came together at. Uh, you know, we started... Uh, That led to uh, an instructional role in the safety department, and it all just kind of took off from there. And I think that's something that, and you guys speak to this, Kenny. I know when you when you talk safety, you're one of the most passionate guys I know. But if you if you can't be passionate about what you're doing, especially in this role, 
you're either not doing it right or, or you probably ought to find something else to do. It's it you've got to have that aspect of your professional life to do what we do. Right. I mean, that's it's just something you've got to have. So one of the things that uh, is is we talk amongst ourselves when we look at the clients that we work with on a regular basis, having safety directors in positions like you guys are in, it's it's a joy to work with folks like you. Because there's a lot of companies out there that, um, you know, it's it, you find a good driver's hard, but finding a good safety, safety director's hard, a good safety manager, uh, just like finding a good mechanics hard. Good folks are hard to find. So I, I commend you guys in what you do and the passion that you have, uh, not just for your companies, but for this industry and specifically the safety rules. Thank you, Mike. Thank that, you. That, that's important. Also, on the other side of the fence with the drivers gaining their trust, their respect. And them understanding that when something happens, we're not going to be immediately judgmental that we're going to try to sit in their seat and look through their eyes. What he just said, you've got a really good real life example of that, because I've heard you say this multiple times, Andy, when it's like to really know what these drivers are going through, the challenges they they face out on the road, what, you know, we're preaching to them safety all the time, but what they actually are coming up against when they're out there on the road, you witness that firsthand because you still get out in a truck and drive some. I do. I drove uh, 60,000 miles last year uh, in addition to my day-to-day stuff. So technology is great. That enables us to work anywhere in the world these days. But to to have that vantage point, to understand what our drivers do day in and day out, to go to the sites they go to, uh, safety becomes a resource for the company. And I think drivers always joke, you know, every time they mess up, oh, we got to go see the safety department. It's not the principal's office. We're We're here to help drivers succeed. Yeah, that's what we do. It's servant leadership. I mean, you're you're really there to help them succeed. Absolutely. Guys, we know uh, from the demographics of our audience that a a lot of the folks that listen to the podcast are safety directors. We've got a good following of drivers. And then we've got a kind of a a group of other folks, owners of trucking companies, administrative people. But most of them are related to the trucking industry in one way or another. A lot of them don't have CDLs, the safety directors. So they don't have the opportunity that you guys do to actually get behind the wheel and drive the truck. But I think that we could make an application of what y'all just shared that it would be equally effective to do a ride along with a driver, particularly if you got a a top notch driver to really see what he or she does on a daily basis. And y'all know I'm from Texas and I want to pause here and uh, say what a beautiful state you guys have the privilege of living in. Uh, I came in from the South. Uh, came up through Joplin and Springfield and, and up that way. And I'm not real sure how far north, Mike, I am in the state of Missouri. <laughs> I don't know much about Missouri geography, but the part I've seen so far has been gorgeous. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful state. And it's an honor to be here with y'all. Um, in the introduction, both y'all indicated you wear a lot of different hats. And our safety directors in Texas tend to do the very same thing. And uh, so I, I, I'd like for y'all to share a word of encouragement most of the safety, unless they work for a really big motor carrier where they have a staff, most of them are doing multiple jobs. And sometimes they, they're tired, they're frustrated, they're pulled two or three different directions at the same time. So if y'all were in a mentoring role to a young safety director coming into the industry, what kind of advice would you give them about navigating that, wearing those different hats? Prioritize. And the- speak to that, please. Deal with the most critical issues first. If it sits on that same list for more than a couple of days, it probably wasn't as important. There you go. There's always a joke in 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 our world that safety, you know, we don't produce revenue, but, you know, we sure can save a lot. Um, I would say be a partner in the business. It's, it's worth it. Be part of that business. Uh, and when you get down in the ranks and understand what other folks do by wearing those other hats, that safety culture starts to infiltrate the entire organization. To add on to that, what Mike said earlier is wholly true. You are in this uh, more of a serving role. You're not the you're not their boss. You're not their dispatcher. You, you're not the owner of the company. You are there to make that driver successful, and in turn, well, the safety director becomes successful, and therefore the company does as well. I couldn't couldn't have said it any better. I appreciate that. I know it's frustrating for Mike and I sometimes, Jim, we'll go into one of our clients, which is a trucking company, 
and they'll call and they'll say, we got a new safety director. I want you to come by and meet them. And we walk in and there's a young man or young woman sitting in there. I had this happen recently and I was just trying to develop some rapport. And I said, well, what do you know about the trucking industry? It happened to be a young lady. And she said, well, I know they go Psh, when they stop. And she said, and I'm not real sure why they do that. And I said, well, what's your background? And she said, well, I was working at Sonic last week and mm. somebody just dubbed her a safety director. Now, we can make light of that or we can say, guess what? That's the reality for that company. And they put that young lady in that position. She doesn't even have any idea what the Federal Motor Care Safety Regulations are. And but she wants to learn. She had a very teachable spirit. So we've got folks like that that literally it's their first week on the job. And then we got some people like sitting around this table, been doing this for decades. And uh, so the words of encouragement y'all give, I'm grateful for that. Those individuals should be part of a trucking association when it, within their state and yeah. rely on the other safety directors. It's a team effort. No doubt. Totally agree. We Perfect. all came to this knowing nothing. and At some point, yeah. yeah. And to associate with great folks like this. Uh, Mike, <laughs> I've known you for better part of a decade now and uh you know you've been very instrumental in my personal success and you know and that filters down that goes down to the driver ranks because it like I said we at the end of the day we're, we're here to support the drivers yeah and make sure they're successful and that's when we all win well it's that looking at it in a team mindset just like you said you're supporting the drivers but in, in reality it's that entire company is a team and to be successful all the parts gotta work together because how often, and, and maybe you guys have been to that, you don't have to name names or anything like that, but maybe you've been in situations where, you know, safety's button heads with operations and, and that becomes an issue. But for a company to really be successful, those two, those two parts of the company have to walk hand in hand. Otherwise, it's, it's, you're constantly fighting yourself. Absolutely true. The safety department is not the keeper of safety that has to be everybody's role i think we got a podcast over trucking association membership don't we yeah we do yeah yeah and and it, it's interesting to hear you you bring that up you got a brand new safety director getting them involved in a an association promoting that you kind of beat around it but like teaching others teaches you more right and getting involved in this and learning from the seasoned uh the people and your military background is showing in some of the things that uh, you've said so far, like your prioritize and execute. So I'm interested. What was your job in the military? Oh, I retired as a chief petty officer, but I was a construction electrician in the CPs. Okay. Do you find your background detail oriented? Did Very. you find it helping you uh, when you think of the leadership in the company uh, being actively involved in their jobs regulatory wise and the rules like to the that. point that my boss tells me i don't really want to know the details yeah <laughs> i yeah. trust you do yeah <laughs> yeah as i move around the regulatory world i'm a prior service as well um it it always uh kind of makes me chuckle a little bit how many prior law enforcement or prior military end up in in the different facets of regulatory affairs we don't produce revenue but we can save a lot what do you mean? Well, you know, avoiding the accident to start with. And it's not just accidents aren't just about claims and money. It's about lives. Uh, I used to talk to orientation classes every week, and I would kind of equate that the importance of safety to the commercial airline industry. For, for example, you talk about pilots have zero room for error because if they fail, lives are at stake, right? They're responsible for a couple hundred people at a time. And when you get behind the driver's seat and you watch all the hundreds, if not thousands of cars that pass you every day, why should that be less important to us? You know, we did an episode recently and we we shared some of those stats. And uh, uh, y'all both know I'm from Texas and, and uh, fiercely proud of my state. But there's there's some things that happen in my state I'm not proud of. We have not had a deathless day in the state of Texas since November of 2000. Uh, we kill an average of 12 people a day on our public highways in Texas. Mm -hmm. And you make an analogy about the aircraft industry. Can you imagine if if the airlines were, were killing basically 90 people a week, which is what we do in Texas on our public highways, 
Congress would step in and and, and make a nationwide shutdown and say, whatever it takes y'all fix this, fix it. You know, that that's what motivates the three of us. And I'm, I'm sure for, for you two guys as well is for us to stop that, you know, where that family don't get that knock on the door at three in the morning, you know. And so I commend both of you for your commitment to excellence. Very proud of you for doing that. The the points you made, it's like it's money's not everything. So the important thing is is protecting lives. We talk about that on our podcast all the time. Absolutely. It's like to protect life. That's what we're that's our number one goal. Whether it's your driver, whether it's the motor in public, you know, that's the number one goal. But you also mentioned something about um the claims and the money. And and we all know that uh, a claim today is significantly larger than the same claim 10 years ago or five years ago or two years ago. So there's something to that as well for a company to be successful when you're talking about people's uh, livelihoods, their careers, things like that. So expound on that a little bit and what you guys see every day. It's like if you can settle a claim or that maybe technology that you use to help you mitigate some of that, because I know that you guys, that's one of the hats that you wear as well. Quick response. Yeah. And, you know, if you're responsible for your actions, um, you can take care of those very effectively without having to uh, make that a long, drawn out and very costly process. Take responsibility. Flip side of that. I mean, you can be the safest fleet in the entire nation by parking every truck on the fence. So there is sure. some inherent risk with being out on the, on the road in the public. To Andy's point, yes, you, you do want to quickly react to the situation. Um, own it if it's yours. Don't fight that. I, I'm just grateful that they mentioned about getting in front of these claims quick because y'all know we work for an insurance agency and and one of the <clears throat> we're not here to sell it. None of us sell insurance, but we we hear complaints sometimes about motor carriers not getting on the claims quick enough, and particularly now with forward facing cameras. You know, that camera will, it, it may exonerate the driver or the flip side of that is it may let you know, you know what, we need to get on this claim quick because it's ours and we need to own it. And uh, so what are your thoughts about uh, how technology is changing the way that we're handling claims, it, 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 particularly the expediency, how fast we're doing them and the interaction with, uh, with uh, adjusters and those sorts of things? If you have a camera that shows what happened, um, the claim is a slam dunk one direction or the other. Right. There, There is no investigation. There is no arguing back and forth over who's at fault. Um, unfortunately, cameras don't see everything. Yeah, this is true. Uh, and sometimes it's such a short snippet that it doesn't paint the entire picture. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, we have that, you know, extended recording option out there where you could go back in time a little bit. But yeah, you're exactly right, Brad. That, that video is uh, invaluable when it comes to uh, painting that picture and knowing how to respond. Well, to the point now that even law enforcement will ask for that video standing yeah. there at, and, and it may not even be a crash scene. It may be just a traffic stop, but they'll ask for that video. And sometimes the driver is not at fault and the officer will recognize that immediately. Well, our, our session this morning, Captain Kelly and his uh, his folks were there, and they mentioned that mentioned mm -hmm. that about uh, troopers on the on the road, the investigating officers requesting that uh, that footage of, of a crash, so they can, I mean, one, so they can write an accurate report. If there if there's mm -hmm. cameras, they're showing what happened. They you know they want to get the report right because to me that's the point of it. Whether you, like you said, Brad, if it's if it's good or bad, we own it, but we want it to be right. We yeah. want it to be accurate, and that's what it does. So the troopers that are investigating those crashes, they want that very same thing. Well, it helps expedite that claim. It also saves me from having to data queue something later because the report is wrong. 100%. The downstream implications for information that is not correct that can that can help that investigation come our, out the right way. Our yeah. job just got easier. That's right. It's, it's, it's a win for everybody. In law enforcement, in my experience, is it's not, you know, do you have the camera footage Will you send me the camera footage? They know that there's a lot of operators, yeah. probably more operators now uh, that have outward facing video at least that don't. Yeah, it's become more of a norm than 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 it was where it was. Uh, you had a few. I, I remember working with a company uh, based out of Illinois years ago. 
that uh, it was one of the first times that situation came up and they had just installed cameras and they, one of the stories that they told was, yeah, we had an accident and uh, um, someone had, we were, the truck was turning left and somebody ran a red light, ran into the truck. And uh, of course there were conflicting stories about who, who hit who and that kind of stuff. And uh, the safety director got on the phone with the officer at the scene and he said, well, send me the, send me the video. And so he did, which showed that, the driver had a, the truck driver had a green arrow turning left and the other car ran a red light and hit him in, in the duels. So the officer wrote his report based on that, cited the other person. And it was like it, that company was sold from the get go. But that was, dude, that was 10 years ago, mm-hmm. you know, and now it's it's much more prevalent. All right. Um, parting thoughts. If you all had uh, the opportunity just to freelance and share wisdom, knowing this. A large percentage of our listeners are safety directors at trucking companies. A large percentage are over-the-road drivers that listen to us while they're driving down the highway. So just what words of wisdom. You can just freelance and share what, what your thoughts are. For the drivers, always be professional. Make the right decision even when nobody's watching. For the safety director, support those drivers that do. I love that. Mm. Absolutely love that. For the drivers, when when you're behind the wheel, driving is the event. Uh, do your best to eliminate every distraction. And I'm not talking about just the, the telephone, uh, electronic devices, distractions in your life. You've got to be able to draw that line that when you get behind the wheel, this is this is my focus right now. And, you know, have gazelle-like intensity, laser focus on that driving. And, and that's the most important thing. Surround yourself with space, uh, no matter what. I, again, I'll go back to um, the session we had earlier today with Mr. Tolliver, uh, three million mile safe driver, and, and he talked about decelerate. You can't always control what's going on around you, but you can you can react to a situation. Allow yourself some space, and and for the for the safety professionals out there, there's um, there is no better service that you could offer to your drivers or your employees than to have an expectation that everybody goes home safely every day. And that's what we're here to do. Amen. Couldn't agree more. This is a relational business. And I just want to tell you guys, you're both dear friends of mine and appreciate you coming on here. The the last question I had for you, which we've got some folks sitting in here listening to us that if you're listening uh, to our podcast today, we actually uh, had several folks in here uh, just listening in, uh, which I thought was cool. And as we look around, I, I look to our two guests, dear friends, and every one of the folks that are in here, I consider friends. Uh, it's a relational, it's a relational business. So speak to that as far as at your companies with your drivers, those folks, but also the folks that you meet at association meetings, truck driving championships, uh, you know, the enforcement personnel that that we have the fortune of having a good relationship good working relationship with speak to that relational aspect of this business before we let you go oh gosh that relationship with our peers i mean talk about the learning aspect when we're brand new this, these are the folks you know we all lean on and learn from uh having those relationships with the state agencies uh enforcement agencies that's that's the best education that you'll get as a safety professional build those relationships um, we were talking with commercial vehicle enforcement this morning where we're, uh, one raised the question about how do I get your folks, your inspectors to come to my facility? Just ask. Yeah. That's all you got. Here's do. my Just card. Ask. Call me and I'll send somebody out. 100%. Well, the other piece of that that you may not be aware of is all of my drivers know of my relationships with you and state agencies and other safety directors and When they've got questions that I can't answer, they say, but I think you know so-and-so, and and they probably know the answer. Let me know what they say. Somebody does, don't they? (laughs) Yeah. Well, that's the beauty of it. We're always, hey, if we don't know, and I I tell people that all the time, if I don't know, we'll figure it out. We'll find somebody that does. We've got, you know, everybody in here I've talked to, hey, we've got an issue. I don't know what the, I don't know what the answer is, but we've got a good relationship. Pick up the phone, call them. We'll get it squared away. It's a team effort. So when we talked about team earlier within our companies, 
this industry, really, when we pull together at association meetings and things like this, and we we pull together, uh, you know, 200 safety directors and folks from governmental agencies, things like that, we're working as a team on this. Safety is the goal. Protecting life. I talk about that all the time on this podcast. Protecting life. That's our goal. But we got to do this as a team. So it's it's yeah, we got teams within our companies. It's but our family gets a little bit bigger when it's we're coming together at, at meetings like this, association meetings where it's people from all over the state, all over the country. You know, Jim coming up from Oklahoma, Kenny coming up from Texas, which, by the way, guys, this is cool that we're actually doing this in person. Thanks for driving up here and doing that. I'm but, glad to meet y'all in person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, you know, Mike, when you're talking about that together. team, though, uh, and and I'm thinking about being here at the, at the Missouri uh, Trucking Association Safety Conference. Out in the operational world, these motor carriers may be competitors. But That's when right. Safety guys come together. You wouldn't know that. We're we're all just family. Yeah. And even though I'm from Texas, it's my very first time here. I already, I, I I'm comfortable. I'm at home. Yeah. Because I'm around like people. This is just my part of the family from Missouri I'd never met before. Yeah. And now I have. Well and, put. and and the Very point good. about that is uh, the, the competition's left outside when safety folks come together because we share a core principle. And that is what Andy said, getting those drivers safe home every yeah. night. That's our job. Keep right. people from getting hurt. And and that aspect that you guys mentioned earlier about the passion for the job, that's key. That is absolutely key to us getting our job done. Amen. Guys, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you coming on, Thank being you. with us on the podcast. It's uh, it's good to hear from folks that are sitting on your side of the desk and in, in the trenches and, and getting the work done. So we greatly appreciate you uh, being a part of this. Couldn't have had two better guys on for sure. I was not sure what you were getting me into, Mike, but I've actually enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for having us on the program uh, you know as a fan of the show it, it, this is great professional development when i'm staring out the windshield from time to time so uh keep up the good work guys appreciate you thank you so much for the kind well, words and to our studio audience we appreciate you guys coming in and listening um i hope you enjoyed that to see a little bit about you know it's nothing fancy right but it's 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 what we do we just get together and we talk about safety so well we appreciate you being here as well we've got you know, a day and a half left of the conference. We've got a uh, we've got an awards banquet tonight. Where we're going to be celebrating drivers of the month, drivers of the year. We're going to be celebrating companies and their their milestones and their safety awards. So that's going to be a good time. Brad, you still got a lot of work to do tonight. Yeah, you're going to be presenting yeah. all of that. Yeah, yeah. We'll find out here in a couple here. hours who is the Missouri Driver of the Year. That's for right. Twenty twenty four. Yeah, we'll crown a new new driver for the year, and uh, looking forward to that part of the of the uh, of the conference because. It's really important for us to celebrate our drivers because, you know, that's that's why we're here. So uh, so I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the, the conference. Kenny, thanks for coming up. Jim, thanks for being here. To all of our listeners out there, thanks for joining us. And we will catch you next time right here on Driving the Line. That's all the time we have for this episode of Driving the Line, The Pursuit of Safety. We hope you enjoyed our discussion and thank you for listening. You can rate, review, and subscribe to Driving the Line, The Pursuit of Safety on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or any other app you're using. You can also follow Marsh McLennan Agency on LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook. Until next time, thanks again for listening. Drive safely, everyone.